it's Wallace. In this video, I'm going to be doing a flip through of an author journal I have very recently set up for myself. I took my sweet time setting it up. It took me a couple of weeks. I would work on it from day to day before I kind of dive in and start writing information either related to me or related to stories I'll be working on. I wanted to just flip through all the pages and show you what's inside. This is going to be a very rambly video. It's probably going to be very long. I'm going to go theoretically in depth into why I set my journal up the way that I did. So I'm just saying that as a little bit of just to, so you can prepare yourself a little bit. For context, I use bullet journals for my author journals. I love dot grid. Here's my old one. I set this one up in the summer of 2020. And I'll just kind of do a quick little glance through this. I had a, I made an entire video for setting this journal up. And as you can see, there are still lots of empty pages, but there are also lots of full pages and it was just starting to feel a little bit crowded so I decided it was time to move on so I'm going to be retiring this journal and I will link the video of me setting that one up in the description if you know once you're done with this one you'd, you want more to look at. I'm using the official bullet journal from the company Lecturum. It's the one that says bullet journal on the front. They're dot grid notebooks, so the inside paper has dots all over them. I used some mild liners in a color scheme that I picked out for this journal specifically. Uh, oh, I also have this gray one that I used. I used two, uh, not gel pens, I don't know, these are, they're called the Juice Up. I think this is from Pilot, uh, but these are also in the color scheme that I picked for the journal. I also had two Micron fine liner pens, the 02 and the 05, just to give me some varying width. Just a regular mechanical pencil as I sketched out some of my plans before marking them in ink. And then this will be my main utensil for writing in the journal going forward. It's an erasable friction clicker pen that I really love. I love the way that sounds. So these are kind of the bulk of the materials. I have a little candle off to the side that is also in the color scheme just for visual interest. But now that we've gone over that, it's time to open her up. I'm gonna move that off to the side just a little bit to give us more room. The journal is really nice. It comes with this band to keep it closed. It comes with three bookmarks that are attached to mark off different sections, which I have already done. I can't remember if I blocked out my full name. Let me go in and check to see if I blocked that out or not, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I had not blocked it out, but I have gone in and done that now. So now we can open it up. So. This is a special page for that comes with the bullet journal. If you buy another journal from the same company that doesn't have the bullet journal labeling on the front, you're not going to have that special page. See, so this doesn't have it. Like I was saying, these are this is a guidelines page. It's just going to help you uh, mark off borders and boxes. It's just a reference and then this I don't know what this is. This just says what and why maybe it's the bullet journal uh, Mantra I have no idea, but it's pretty I like the gold foiling or the rose gold foiling All right <clears throat> This is where I have my full name written down and my first name which is Wallace and author journal for the year 2022 to 2023 since I set this up in May it's gonna go from May to May and as I'm hoping you can tell, I chose a cherry blossom theme for this bullet journal. That's just something that I scattered throughout all the various pages as a way of creating cohesion throughout the entire book. I have to always mention that my doodle inspiration comes from Amanda Rachley, who runs a planner bullet journal channel on YouTube and Instagram and has her own shop and stuff. I will link her below if you haven't checked her out. You definitely should. But she has a whole video about how to doodle uh, cherry blossoms and so that's where all of my skills came from. We're from her. She's a great teacher. Her videos are great. 
The next page is the key. This was automatically included by the bullet journal company. These are printed in. They give you kind of a guideline for how you should mark different things. So if you can see here, a dot means a task, an X through a dot means a task completed, etc., etc. And then up here, they printed intentions. Uh, and I kind of wanted to use it both as an intentions page and as a quote page, even though I have talked about this before, but I'm not really a quote kind of girl. But for an author journal, I thought, you know, I want to pull from a story or an author that means a lot to me. So I actually wanted to get a quote from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And the quote that I settled on is from the third book in the Hitchhiker's trilogy. The book is Life, the Universe, and Everything. And the quote is in the context of figuring out how to fly. And the quote itself is basically that the trick is to throw yourself at the ground and miss. And I chose this quote because, first of all, I think it's hilarious. And secondly, some of the writing projects I'm going to be embarking on, I can definitely see myself getting overwhelmed by them or intimidated by them. And I think this is just a quote that I wanted to keep in mind as I moved forward because I need to give myself permission basically to be bad in order to be good, if that makes sense. Throw yourself at the ground and then miss. Uh, so basically this, this quote is my version of progress, not perfection, which is if you've watched my channel in the past, you know that that is a quote that I harp on a lot because I think it's silly. Even though it's like a totally genuine quote, I don't know why I hate on quotes so much, but whatever. Um, I just had to be a unique hashtag not like other girls and find a quote that meant basically the exact same thing but from a, a science fiction story. So that is where this quote is from, throw yourself at the ground and miss. And I'm actually really happy that I have that in there and it's going to be one of the first things I see every single time I open this up. So. I like it. All right, the next couple of pages are the index, basically, and you're getting a little bit of a sneak peek here about what is going to be on the inside of this book. As I create pages, I'm going to fill them in, and I tried to give myself lots of space in between different sections because I have sectioned off the journal quite a bit. I also have just little flourishes of washi tape on these pages. I didn't want to fill them up with cherry blossoms too much just because I didn't want to you know, I wanted there to be some break in the monotony of that theme, but the, this washi tape is small pink flowers, so I feel like it kind of is still part of that aesthetic, so I think it still works. This is the index continued. This is the future log. Again, this was something already pre-printed in by the Bullet Journal Company. Uh, the Bullet Journal also came with a sticker sheet that had lots of decorative stickers, but also these functional stickers with the month names and then long columns of 1 to 31. And so basically I'm using this as a way to plan out my next year and kind of just have check-in points for when I would like to be done with certain tasks. So for example, on the 1st of July, I would like to send this book of October off to beta readers potentially. And you know, by July 15th, I, well, <laughs> theoretically I would like to be done with my draft of the novel I'm currently working on. Already, already this one is in question. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna cover her up. Also, I would like to comment on the one single chocolate short story done at the end of every month on the 31st of every month, given the fact that not every month has a 31st. Uh, I just liked that they were all in a line. I didn't want it to zigzag, which is why I have them all listed on the 31st. Basically, this is just to mean that I would like to have a chocolate short story done at the end of every month. And for the most part, as you can see here, I don't have that same thing on this page. There's only one thing I have listed on this page, and it's a check-in for a different project uh, that I want to work on in upcoming years. And basically that's because, you know, I can get so behind or ahead of schedule on certain projects that I don't want to plan a full year in advance because I feel like I'm, I'm going to be remaking those plans anyway. And yes, I wrote all of these in the erasable pen. These are all written in this erasable pen. You can just, in fact, we're just gonna, we're just gonna erase this because it's just, it's not gonna happen. And we need to, we need to accept that. We're gonna put, uh, to be done with that draft down here. 
even this is still a stretch, but <clears throat> we're just gonna, we're gonna still be optimistic. Uh, but even with the erasable pin, I didn't want to have to constantly be going in and erasing stuff. So I'm only planning six months at a time in December, or I guess in October, I'll come back and I'll maybe plan out for the next six months. But that's the future log. All right. These two pages were the first two I came up with. They are a little hectic as I was getting my bullet journaling chops back into gear. I have my productive procrastination, which again, I've talked about quite a few times on this channel in different instances. I love having a system for when I feel myself getting stuck. Uh, I basically give myself permission to procrastinate in a way that I still find healthy. And you'll notice that going on TikTok is not any of the options. So basically I've said, if you're stuck, roll a random number and complete the task. So basically one through 10, any of the options, whichever the dice basically lands on is something I have to do. I would either have to go for a 20 minute walk, play with my dog, watch author tube videos to get inspired, listen to my project playlist, add three pieces to my project uh, Pinterest board or mood board, clean my area for five minutes. This is an important one just because sometimes the reason I'm stuck is because I'm in a messy area. And so I think this one is helpful. I think they're all helpful, but I specifically wanted to call that one out. Read for 10 minutes, meditate for an undisclosed period of time, apparently, <laughs> journal or take a shower. So this is probably one of the most powerful ones. I do most of my problem solving in the shower, but we can't all be taking like four showers a day. So this one, that's why I have to first try and do all these things. Well, not, you know, I also have to have the option of doing all these things. I can't always immediately go to a shower every single time I get stuck. Then this next page over here is my ideal week. Uh, I was going to put this in as my like default week, but the more I thought about it, this this isn't something I want to treat as a default. And then if I fail to achieve it, I have failed at doing my default. I wanted to put it as an ideal week. So I always recognize that this is something to aspire to and it's okay if it's not every single week looking like this. Not to give out my full schedule on blast, but on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, I'd like to go to my office where I do certain work in the morning from like eight to 11, and then from 11 to five on each of these days, I'd like to be doing Pomodoros for the story that I'm currently working on. Uh, I will also be doing Pomodoros for that story on Thursdays, but I will be at home and on Thursdays every other week, I do a check-in with my agent about how the story is going. So I have that written down. And Saturdays and Sundays, I'm not working on that story. I'm instead working on this book is for October because I would like to get that off to my sister on the 1st of October. And then Wednesdays, I don't write. That's my role. Since Saturdays and, Saturdays and Sundays, I'm working on a different project, a very fun project, a mental break project for sure compared to the manuscript. Uh, but since I am technically supposed to be writing on these days, I realized it was important to have one day a week where there was no writing whatsoever uh, to give my wrists a break, if anything, but also my brain a break. And I thought Wednesdays is the perfect day for that just because a lot of the people in my life, it's also their day off of work so we can be together. And also, uh, it's kind of right in the middle of the week, which means that if, if I'm tired from two days in a row of working on the project, I have a break from it, I work another two days, and then I have a break from it again, but I'm just working on a different project this time. So that's the theory behind that. And I kind of like these two pages, even though they look a little messy. I think they're fun. They're fun kind of jump right into it. All right, and then this is where I started to realize I needed to partition off the journal. So anytime we hit a new major section, I used a candle to create an, a rim. And then I did this sort of uh, cherry blossom wreath pattern around the rim, which I think actually turned out really, really lovely. And so this section, not to toot my own horn, <laughs> but if, if I'm tooting anybody's horn, I'm tooting Amanda Rachel Lee's horn because she's really, really the person behind this. Uh, and then this section is my collection section. I went onto Pinterest and I typed in like, what are some good things to put into 
uh, an author journal and I also asked uh, Stieg and Katie and Devesha and they came up with things and I realized that I wanted to just have a section full of things to collect where they're sort of in the moment they're orphans of ideas or locations or for example names that I might want to use in stories but I don't know what story and so I'll just collect them here and then maybe over time I'll be looking through this journal one day and a name from here and a location from this page and some a scenario from another page will all kind of congeal together and suddenly I'll have a new story idea. So for this page, it's names. I only have six spots because names aren't really something that I collect very often. Usually I don't name a character until I meet that character and they kind of appear in my head. Uh, so names aren't really something that I just have floating around that I'd like to use, but it does happen occasionally. And so I made this page. I have a quote at the bottom that said, that says, words have meaning and names have power. I think that's a fun quote. Oh my God. I didn't, I didn't say who wrote that quote. I have no idea who wrote this quote. I think I just Googled quotes about names. So oops, that's me. Can't properly cite her sources. My apologies. Uh, I have six spots for potential names. I've used up one. I have a kind of burgeoning idea for a story and I was considering what uh, one of the characters' names should be and I thought of the name Canon, uh, but I realized that I have a different burgeoning story idea where that might, name might fit as well. So I put it here as an example for why I formatted the page this way. Basically, uh, the name goes at the top and then it's underlined and then underneath I write descriptors about it like the fact that this name would be for me, for in my stories it would be for a male, and I write what it actually means on behindthename.com which is just a clergyman or a lawman, and then uh, then I write down what it gives, what kind of vibe it gives to me. So for me, canon gives off a vibe of strength, war, brutal explosion, power, uh, and then I have another note of versus canon with one in versus two ends, and then here I have a star about what stories I'm potentially interested in including this name, and of course I can't do it in all three of these stories, so they'll have to fight to the death to figure out who gets it, or if anybody gets it at all. It might, it might come out on like the top 10 baby names list of 2022, and I'll realize like, oh no, this name is way too common, and I'll strike it off. And then I have a section here for general notes, just in case these six spots aren't enough, and I just want to do quick you know, write down of names or if there's any random brainstorming that I have, I wanted to have that there. Mainly because I made these too big to make a third column, so that's why that happened. <laughs> uh, the next section is locations. It's going to be very similar to this. Uh, in the past, I definitely have come across a place and I thought, wow, this place is beautiful. I want to write a story about it. In fact, the manuscript I'm writing right now, the first third of the book takes place at a location in Rhode Island that I had randomly seen a YouTube video on years ago and I was like I have to eventually write a story there and so I was kind of holding it on in my back pocket and it wasn't until one night when I was just kind of sitting around listening to music and I had all these different bits and pieces that I'd been holding on to in my back pocket and they all went and came together and uh, became the manuscript that I'm about or that I'm currently writing so uh, yeah, that's kind of, mainly that's the thesis of why I have this collections section. So we have names for characters, locations, vibes is just the idea of almost aesthetic, but I didn't want to be so specific about saying aesthetic, so I also included vibes because, you know, it could be an aesthetic like, oh, dark academia, that's the vibe, or steampunk, that's the vibe, but it could also be the vibes of a shopping mall that's been abandoned in 50 years in the future. You know, like, that's kind of the general idea there. So I wanted to leave this wide open because I feel like this is going to be more of a brainstormy thing versus this one, which is concrete locations that I know about or I think of and want to write down. And then these two pages, or actually these next four pages are my what if section. And this is kind of, this is very different than vibes, but also they're cousins because this is scenarios versus 
aesthetics. So for example, this could be if I'm thinking out loud one day of, oh, what if uh, people were born in a world where everybody had a nose like Voldemort, you know, like the most <laughs> random things. And I can just write those down here and, you know, at a certain point I can pluck that up and decide I want to further explore it, sandbox it, and maybe pull things from all of these lists and have the scenario and then create an actual story. So that's what these four pages are for. And then this was a recommendation from the lovely Steve Deardall to have a words that you love uh, spread. And so that's the next four or so pages. Oh, maybe the next six pages. Wow, I was really generous with my word collection. I have three right now that I chose just to give you an idea of what this will look like once it gets completely full. And again, I have that little splash of washi tape because I didn't want to go in and do the cherry blossoms uh, just because of the way that this is laid out, I didn't want to draw cherry blossoms and then have it interrupt the flow of the collection. So uh, right now I have three words. I have confabulation, esoteric, and frenetic. Those are all words that I've really been loving recently. I feel like esoteric is one of Katie's favorite words. I could be completely making that up, but Katie Ann writes, if this is one of your favorite words, comment down below and let us know. <laughs> All right, that's the end of my collection section. The next section is trackers, and basically that's gonna be everything from 10K days to write-a-thons to large writing events within either my life or the AuthorTube community. As you can see, I'd already put in a tracker for the 10K day I was supposed to host on May 10th, and that didn't end up happening, so I crossed that out, and I will fill in the date at which that does occur. It does have to happen sometime in May, as you can see. I'm committed to that. I am. I really am. Uh, then um, the next tracker is for May Chaos Rain, which is an event that the Chaos Queens are hosting this month. I'm not doing very well, as we can see. I'm going to have to really focus on getting some of these in the next weeks. I think I'm just going to, I'm not even going to pay attention to the reading ones because those stress me out. So I'm really just going to try and go for writing, watching, and self-care. If I can't at least get self-care by the end of the month, then I failed at life. But all of these pages are going to be reserved. I think I have like 10, 20 more pages reserved for the next year for events like write-a-thons and 10k days, etc. Then this is one of the bulkiest parts of the book. This is my project section. And this one is segmented even further uh, by project. So the first project in this section is this book is for October. Now, here's the thing. I should have mentioned before that, oh, hold on. So I have many, many projects that I am working on or I just have in my periphery at any given time. And depending on how serious they are will depend on how many pages they get in here or if they actually even get their own project journal. So this is a project journal that I have. The entire dot grid journal is dedicated to that story. It's the manuscript that I'm currently working on. I set this up in January. I technically filmed a video of me setting up and then I just never edited it. So here's hoping this video sees a better fate. And this story, had originally, it originated in this bullet journal and it had its own section in this bullet journal. And once I decided that I really loved the idea, I really loved the story, I wanted to go forward and potentially pursue publishing it, that's when it got its own project journal. And that's kind of the distinction for when something has its own project journal or not, or if it's just in the general author journal itself, is how serious I am about pursuing publishing it, or if it's more of just a fun, fluffy passion project, or if it's a project still, if it's still a fledgling, you know? So for example, this book is for October is very serious to me in that I have written a full manuscript of it. I'm planning on re-editing it this year and giving it to my sister, but it's not something I ever plan on fully publishing. And I don't think I need an entire journal to take me to where I am now in the writing process all the way to the end, giving it to my sister. So that's why it just has a set of pages in my general author journal as opposed to its own project journal. But there are other projects that you'll get sneak peeks at where in, you know, next year maybe when I remake my author journal, they won't be in here because they will get their own or 
I should say it, because it will probably just be one at a time, it will get its own project journal because it's now something that I'm pursuing more seriously and needs its own 200 page journal to really let me uh, explore it as much as I need to explore it. So that's kind of the lowdown on all of that, if you care. So yeah, this is, this book is for October. I have a little kind of Halloween washi tape just to give the vibe. In the last author journal I had, uh, I was very, hold on, let me see if I can find it. I was very over the top with my decorations for the Tibifo page, you can see. Uh, and I just, I don't know, I wanted this journal to be a little bit more contained, a little sleeker, so I decided not to go so extra, which I'm I'm sorry if that's disappointing, but it's what I wanted to do. I have my notes that I took while I was rereading it. Uh, I left a page just in case I have any more notes in between that. And then I created two pages of to-do list. I have my to-do for The Hedge Witch, which is a portion of this book is for October. It's the bulk of the story, or it's the bulk of the book, and it's the story, the novel within this book is for October. I have multiple sections of this to-do list. I have my rewrite section, the beta reading section, and then like the final things to do before I send it off to my sister. So for example, one of the first things I needed to do was reread and take notes, which I'd done both of those. And then I've broken down into chunks the rewriting process. And then for a beta reading, I have to do my call for betas. I have to create a questionnaire. I have to send to betas. And of course I have to wait and incorporate the feedback. And then in this final section is stuff like final edits, which I have broken down a little bit more into sections here. Um, I want to hire a cover editor. I want to do interior formatting. I want to research right printers to print the story, print it, and then the very final thing on the to-do list is to give it to my sister on October 1st. So that's the to-do list for The Hedge Witch, but also this part down here is also for the whole book itself. Then on this page is the to-do list for the appendix of this book is for October, which is Again, this is all very complicated, but I'm hoping most of you have watched my videos about This Book is for October. If you haven't, by the way, another shameless self-promo, I have a whole playlist in which I am very open about that entire story because, as I said, it's a gift for my sister, and thus I talk about it freely. There are no secrets about it on my channel. I go in-depth into the outline and my writing process and the woes and the wins and everything, so if you've been jonesing for someone who's super duper open about the writing process, you can go and check out that playlist because I don't upload very often, but when I do, I'm very talkative, if you couldn't tell. But anyway, so this book is for October, just a quick little recap, has two sections. It's got the section that is the hedge witch, which is the story within the book, and then the appendix, which is activity lists, and there's going to be like a fake little spell book in the back, and a recipe book of all the recipes that they cook in the hedge witch. Uh, and for example, the activity lists, I want to make a list of 31 scary movies. Like they're going to be like checklists where every single year my sister can go in and check off to say that she has done that thing in October. So 31 scary movies, 31 happy Halloween movies, 31 fall activities, 31 songs to listen to. Uh, dance versus ambiance. Apparently I wanted to make two separate lists. So I don't know. I, this is just a guide really to help me fill out the back of the book. And like I said, here is a section where I'm writing down ideas for the spell book. And then I also have a section for the recipes that I want to include. And then my last page that I have like decided on for this section of this book for October is my cover design brainstorming. This spread will probably take up this entire page, but I wanted to have a little guidance on this side and then let myself be a little bit looser here or get a little more structured as I get closer to this part of the process. Uh, but I have a section for brainstorming of ideas that I want for the cover. Once again, plugging myself. The last video I uploaded, or one of the last videos I uploaded, was me attempting to design covers for this story on my own and subsequently deciding that I need to hire somebody to do it. So that's why I have this in here. Uh, I have a place to write down the names of artists, their prices, and any notes that I have. And what I'm thinking is actually this will kind of be where stuff gets finalized and this is going to be where I take looser notes uh, on the whole cover design process. And then there's a bunch of 
empty pages, empty spreads, just to make room for if I want to do an entire new board spread for the new chapter that I have to write because there is one whole new chapter that I know I need to kind of squeeze into this story. So I, you know, there's there's just room for further exploration, but it's not that many pages because like I said, or I don't know if I said this, but during my reread, I was really pleased with my reread and I don't think, knock on wood, I don't think there is an insane amount of work left to do. There's a lot of work left to do, but I don't think, think there's an insane amount of work left to do. Uh, the next section that I have is very simple. I only have this little marker for it. I don't have any other markers, but it's my chocolate short story section. I have the little Fortnum & Mason logo because that's the company where the short stories are from. Once again, you can go check out my playlist. <laughs> of my chocolate short stories if it is of interest to you. Basically, I have uh, this library of chocolate bars that I was given as a Christmas gift, and each chocolate bar is designed to look like a little short story. And oh, for the past year, I've been trying very slowly, slowly but surely, well, surely with a question mark, uh, been making my way through them and writing short stories based off of each chocolate bar. And I have about 19 left, I think, which is why if I think we counted it out, there would be 19 or maybe like 23 uh, pages so that basically each short story gets its little page because I usually like to brainstorm the short story inside of my author journal before I start typing it up. So that's that section. Then I have my storm chasing project, which is the project title is just Tornado Blondes, just because it's like in a reference to a perfume that I really love. Uh, that is not going to be the final title of the project, most likely. But this is an interesting, I would say right now, this is the project that has the most pages dedicated to it because this is the project that I can see eventually becoming a really serious project for myself, but there is a ton of stuff a ton of steps that I have to take before I can really uh, get serious about the story itself. And the main thing is, is that it's a storm chasing book. Uh, I don't storm chase. So I, this first year I is about research basically. So I had, I think I reserved about 30 pages in here for just research. We're in tornado season right now in Texas. It goes from late April to early June. Right now it's very basic. I'm just getting myself comfortable with reading radar and learning the language and the verbiage of this kind of the community that exists around storm chasing. But when I tell you that right now this book is just vibes, it's totally just vibes because all I know, it's like, it's basically, <laughs> if we go, to hear. It's basically, I wrote storm chasing question mark and then decided yes and took nothing from any other thing. I don't have character names. I don't really have locations. Well, okay, I know it's going to take place in America and Tornado Alley because, you know, that's kind of where the majority of that culture occurs. But for the most part, I just took storm chasing from the vibes uh, and have decided to commit years of my life to researching it on the potential of writing a book about it, but who knows if it's even a project worth pursuing, which is what this year is really about. So the only spread that I have made right now for this project, because the rest of the pages are really just gonna be brain dump, is my initial questions to answer. Basically, when, what, who, where, notes, because I made a mistake, um, and then gave myself a full page for why. Why tell this story? but. Basically, I don't want to decide if I'm going to commit to all the intense work that could come, like actually going on a storm chase myself. That would be a couple years down the line, but that's like what I'm talking about when I say there's a lot to do for this story in order to do it right, I think. But before I commit to doing stuff like that, I would love to have a general idea of these questions. Why is the biggest one? Why tell this story? Why why always i'm just generally asking myself why all the time so anyway i have that in here and then like i said the rest of the pages are blank for brainstorming and general 
nonsense. Then I have Project Blackwater. I only have about 10 pages dedicated to this project in here. It's a silly project. It's a little bit like this book is for October. Likely the only person to ever read this is my sister. Uh, it kind of is a brain rot project. I uh, think of it every single summer when I go up north and I'm on a cottage on a lake and uh, this story just really sparks in my mind when I'm in that location. And so I knew that was probably going to happen again this summer. So I included uh, about five, it's like six or oh, maybe, yeah, I think only 10 pages, uh, just in case I get hit with the bug for the story in the summer. And I wanted a place to write it down, but it's very, it's a very small piece of the whole projects section. Then we have other stories, which this I'm treating as a new section because it really is, this is the true brain dump. This is where things are going to go really wild. It's not going to be pretty spreads. It's going to be scribbles and drawings and just crazy nonsense. And it's when things in these blank pages start to solidify that they might then get taken over to these more formal pages. You know, maybe I'm writing down a short story and I come up with a name that I really love but it doesn't feel right in the short story so maybe I'll write it here or maybe in my scribblings brain dumps here I envision a location that I really love and so I want to solidify it because I don't want it to get lost in the craziness of what this will become so this you know it's a very boring section right now but it's meant to be blank canvas because that I think is where you know, some of the best creative ideas come from is just a blank page as opposed to a structured page. I think that there is use in structured pages, but I wanted to give myself unstructured space as much as I could because I think I thrive with that. Then I have a section for publishing. So here's my thing. Uh, I debated about having this section in this journal. As I mentioned earlier, any story that I am, you know, definitively interested in attempting to publish I uh, and I know and my agent knows about it and uh, you know there's like a plan in place those stories get their own project journals and like this one and inside this one there is already a section for the whole publishing process it's a place it's both a place for me to kind of write down notes you know when I'm having a meeting with my agent but it also serves as a diary for how I'm feeling about the publishing process, a place for me to check in if I'm getting overwhelmed by submission or anything like that. Um, obviously, I haven't gone and sub with this story yet. The manuscript's not even finished, but I'm just giving an example. But yeah, I debated about putting that section then in here just because, as I said, none of the stories in here, for the most part right now, are in even like knocking on the door of the publishing process. But I figured, better safe than sorry, what if I'm out and about? This this is always going to be on me. It fits in my purse perfectly. This project journal sits in my office most days and it, on my desk and it's quite big and bulky and it does not travel around with me. So I figured better safe than sorry in terms of like if I'm having an impromptu meeting, if I get a call from someone and I want to just jot it down and write it down, I have a section for that that is apart from like the section that's meant to be creative and not meant to be business casual. So that's why I have it. I don't think I dedicated that many pages. I think it's maybe, well, oh, maybe it's more than I thought. Oh, let's see, 165 to 81. So it's about 15 pages. So not that many pages. And then the final section of the journal is my author tube section. And here I have uh, a list of monthly goals and tasks. And then also in here, uh, <laughs> well, I'm laughing because one of my goals is a weekly upload. That was also one of my New Year's resolutions. And um, hmm, how well have we done on that? Not well, I'm just gonna be honest about it. But it is my goal. I would love to get back to weekly uploads. I would love to get back to weekly sim streams, which isn't really an author tube thing, but whatever. Um, and then to make sure that I'm doing monthly or I'm hosting or making sure somebody else is hosting a 5k or a 10k day in the discord every single month. And then also just tasks. I want to have a list of things to do every single month to make sure I'm just staying involved in the author tube community. Uh, I'd like to check in on the author tube newbie tag once a month just to see 
see if there are any newcomers into the community. And I also want to every month have some dedicated time to improving my Final Cut Pro skills just to improve the quality of my video editing, etc. But the rest of these pages are going to be dedicated. I'm, I forgot to make a spread. This is a spread that I wanted to make of channels to check out. And then the rest of these pages, for the most part, um, are going to be dedicated to video ideas, ideas for hosting events in the Discord, just any idea that's going to make uh, being an author tube and participating in author tube more enjoyable. So, and that takes us all the way to the end of the journal. The final thing that I have actually, <gasps> secret pocket. Hello. Um, oops, sorry, quick cut there, but um, <laughs> my camera overheated because I've been talking for so freaking long. Just for a little bit of context, I am decluttering my room. I'm trying to get rid of a thousand items in May and I found a journal that I thought was empty but actually contained pages from a story a short story idea I was trying to write over 10 years ago and I uh, cut those pages out of the journal and wanted to keep them in here because I thought it was so special. It's a kind of family drama short story called The Twelve and it's uh, intrigue. It's very reminiscent of Knives Out but uh, also pulls from Greek mythology, hence why it's called the Twelve, because there's 12 family members and each of their personalities is based off of the 12 gods of the Greek pantheon. But I just wanted to show you that that's what I'm using this little pocket for, is to hold an old story idea I had that maybe eventually I'll return to. But that is it for this journal. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this provided some sort of inspiration for your own bullet journals let me know down below if you like to burn bullet journal if you have your own author journal set up and if you have your own videos about it and let us all know down below so we can go and watch but i really don't have anything else to say thanks for watching all the way to the end i hope you have a fabulous rest of your day evening whatever um, and don't forget to go be happy go be healthy and go write